coming up here and playing one of these days? Oh, for sure. We'll work something out. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot. Big Thank round you. of applause for David Boykin of Thank David you. Boykin and Expanse. You can see him at uh, 63rd Street Beach this coming Wednesday the 20th. He'll be there early in the morning at sunrise. He'll be there at sunset. So This is a big weekend in the neighborhood. Artists of the Wall has kicked off as we speak. Uh, the final uh, squares are being uh, sold and uh, bought up and uh, the, the entire wall will begin being painted um, uh, as uh, as the day goes on and as tomorrow goes on. This is 19 years worth of painting the wall. And I'm just going to uh, move over here and carry my microphone with me. Hey kids, welcome aboard. Um, so big news yesterday was uh, the extent to which it actually happened. Um, uh, Obama changed his immigration policy. Hallelujah. Uh, there's a partial DREAM Act happening out a there. A partial. And, Step uh, forward. Well, there's a lot of kids whose fears have been allayed and who uh, are breathing a sigh of relief. All those kids who came to the States with their parents when they were infants or three or four years old and who have served their country in many cases and the military have certainly gone through school now uh, see a glimmer of hope and uh, that was what we voted for four years ago, uh, President Obama. Um, so thanks for uh, handing us a piece of it. Uh, okay. Well, that's good. Who do we good. have up here now? Why do you think it happened today? I mean, why? What, what? Well, he, it happened because uh, there's an election coming up. Oh, yeah. And he's pushing it. Uh, so uh, we'll see a lot of good things coming out of him. And probably a couple things we don't like. Well, that's already happened. All right, before we he's introduce, done, done before we introduce our already. next guest, I got to say that uh, 42 years ago today, uh, my uh, my son Jesse Hampton Nathaniel William Floyd Robin James was born. Happy and, uh, birthday, Jesse! And we want to say happy birthday to you, Jesse. I know you're probably sleeping over there in Queens, New York, nah, but uh, it's a. You know, you made uh, my life very happy that day. You've made my life pretty damn happy ever since. And uh, those of you out there in the heartland, listening land, who know Jesse James, uh, think about him because uh, he's doing good in the world. And, um, and, and do that most modern of all things, wish him happy birthday on Facebook. Yeah, well, you could join the, the throngs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're doing it. Exactly. Okay, so to 100 years ago also today, or maybe recently, or soon to be, uh, <laughs> Studs Terkel was born. What is the actual birth date of Studs Terkel? Uh, May uh, 12th, I mean May 16th, 1912. Right. So, the same so birthday um, as my brother. A month ago, oh, we got all these relatives yep. having birthdays and stuff. Okay, so... Uh, 100 Wait, years and we, one month ago. We actually sang happy birthday to Studs Terkel here on his 85th birthday when we had him on the show. Cool. Yeah. And so I don't think we have nice video moment. of that. We do, and we're looking for the recording of that. We do have still pictures and a translation. It's back in the in that the was printed in the Heartland area. Journal. <laughs> uh, so we have Sarah I mean, Chapman and Jack. Tom Weinberg. Welcome, you two. And we're glad nice to, to have you here. both. Thank you. Yes. We're gonna do this. You yes. the mics, Katie. Yep. You and I will share that. We're mic. sharing a mic. So if you guys hug up close, Sarah, let's start with you. What uh, what is it you're doing, and how does it relate to uh, honoring the hundredth anniversary of Studs Terkel? Well, um, Tom and I run an archive called the Media Burn Independent Video Archive in Chicago. We're located on the northwest side, and um, we have a large collection of documentaries produced by Chicagoans, a lot of them about Chicago, um, and a large portion of this collection um, documents Studs Terkel. Um, he donated, um, we have about 300 tapes documenting Studs, and he donated about half of them, and about half of them come from the work of Tom Weinberg, who's sitting next to me, and um, who is a TV and video producer. And um, we partnered, since this year is the cent centenary of Studs' birth, we partnered with the Studs Terkel Centenary Committee to present a film and video festival, um, which we've been doing this month. This, um, the third event will be on this Sunday at the Chicago Cultural Center. And Tomorrow. Right, tomorrow, from 2 to 8. And um, we've been presenting rare materials That'd from our June collection. 17th. June 17th, yes. Uh, rare materials from our collection to the public. It's all sorts of stuff people have never seen before. The best of studs from the 40s through uh, his death. So, Tom, what is it? Uh, how did you hook up the... the you, she said, and Tom, what he did. What is your uh, approach to all this uh, archival gathering of stuff? Uh, 
um, technical terms, uh, all of the above. That's cool. Um, we got a lot of videotapes in a room on on Irving Park Road. Um, maybe six or seven thousand of them, kind of stashed away from the years when video first started, which is some of the years even before. Well, anyway, a long time ago, Michael. <laughs> um, from the 70s, when, when video first started. So we have all these videotapes. Two things had to happen. One is they had to be preserved so that they wouldn't go away because they wouldn't fall apart. And two is because of the internet, we could get them out there for the world to see. So people, uh, uh, the next generation of people like Sarah came along and knew how to figure out how to do that. We raised a little money and now we've got, what, about 2,500 videos online. We've got a whole system for doing it. It's all free. People use it in schools. They use it just to get off themselves. <laughs> right, they're streaming at mediaburn.org. And is, what's the name of the outfit? Media Burn? Mediaburn.org. M-E-D-I-A-B-U-R-N dot O-R-G. And you are inspiration to our own videographer, Paul Wozniak. Because <laughs> he's uh, sending me all kind of emails about potential stuff to look at in your collections. Cool. I do have one question. I don't think it's videotaped, but you, since we're talking Studs Terkel, sure. um, long before we had Studs on the radio show, when I was still closer to having been a rising up angry guy than, and, and an early Heartland guy, Studs did an interview with me. And uh, I was in a little bit of a spiritual mode at the time. I was trying to, you know, mix uh, healthy food and spirituality. The week you did est? No, that was, <laughs> that was way earlier. Back when someone told me I had a big aura, I said, it probably looks like Swiss cheese. Um, but uh, he, uh, he was... I remember you then. He was great. And he, at the end of the interview, he gave me a $10 bill or a $20 bill or something. And I, I, you know, I was blown away. But I don't think it's ever been used. And I'm trying to track it down to see how far off my thinking might have been at the time. No info, huh? <laughs> well, you know, Studs did what he cared about. And he acted on it. And that's one of the things that made him an inspiration, still makes him an inspiration for us, for all of us. Yeah. He's a, he was a remarkable guy. I mean, in so many ways. How did you meet Studs, Tom? Well, funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys talk to each other before the show? <laughs> uh... You know all of them. How did I know? How did you? I want to know how you met him. <laughs> well, you see Judy Hoffman over there who's in the room. Judy. I thought Judy was coming on the show, but she one said, no, great, I'm just eating the, the breakfast. Great <laughs> film and video people and, and teachers in Chicago land. Um, Judy and I, and a woman named Anda Course, whom you probably remember. I do. Um, started a project, and we didn't call them projects then, we were making a video that uh, was based on Studs Terkel's book, Working. Working, We right. thought, well listen, he did this, he figured out how to get regular people to talk to a microphone, what, what, let's us try it with video, which was brand new essentially. Then. That's something like we do every week here. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, go ahead. So, Sorry. out of that came uh, 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 an hour of TV where we ask people, uh, what do you do all day, and their work, and how do you feel about it? Well, we did, we did interviews with lots of people, one of whom was Studs, because we wanted to turn the table on him a little bit. And what happened um, is that that was... What year is like 74? Like 74, 75, yeah. You know, and, and so that was the first time I met him, and I kind of met him a lot after that for the next 40 years. We had, I had students who actually worked with studs in the archives at the, what was then the Historical Society, mm -hmm. where he hung out for many years, right? Right. I mean, he archived a hassle load of stuff. Yeah, he had a lot of lunch there, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I have to confess that in the E! News we sent out yesterday, uh, his name was spelled incorrectly. Ay, ay, ay. But if you want to get that in E! Oh, news on a regular basis, go to 
uh, heartlandcafe.com and there's a place to sign up. So you will get all the information about this radio show, food that we're serving here at the Heartland, drinks coming up, bands, etc., etc. Sarah, how did you get involved with this? Well, actually, um, Judy is the key in this again. Um, I was a student of Judy's at the University of Chicago um, about 10 years ago, and um, Judy was showing all these these really exciting um, guerrilla television videos. People like Judy and Tom were going around, um, they picked up these portable video cameras, and they were saying, like, hey, we're going to make a new kind of TV, which didn't exactly happen except on a limited basis, which is uh, basically the stuff that's collected in our archive. But so Judy got me very interested in this. Um, I met Tom, and um, Tom was saying, like, I got a room full of tapes, so I want to preserve them, and I just kind of ended up coming around and um, turned it into an archive, and we've been doing it for nine years now. Um, wow. Built it up. We got a lot of big grants and recognition, and um, it's a pretty important archive. And point. people can see uh, a big chunk of these videos if they go to mediaburn.org? Yep, they're all streaming for free. And they can, they can stay busy for... 100 years. About, yes. Uh, what do you think? Four weeks, five weeks? At least, least much more than that. 24-7. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta jump in here, too. Okay, we got Judy Hoffman. I, Judith Judy, Hoffman. Well, to you, Judith. Um, what... I think um, what Sarah took away from my class is something that I teach, which uh, has to do with the Port Huron Statement. Are you familiar with? It? Yeah, we're yeah, slightly familiar with the years Port ago Huron. Today, and there actually is a conference going on in Ann Arbor this weekend to, to talk it. about it. But most of the people who were involved with the Port Huron Statement weren't making it to the conference. Everyone wanted to be kept in in tune with it, but they weren't coming to Ann Arbor. So there's some of the same philosophy. Um, an analysis in the Port Huron Statement trickled through to media and in fact um, is very similar to guerrilla television uh, ideology. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not your typical videos what that is, you see. Give me a quick def of guerrilla television. Well, how, a quick would be to really question who makes television, for what reasons, in what settings, and what kinds of information. How is knowledge produced? And it is essentially television as we consume it is um, produced for um, to keep people um, oppressed. Of, yeah, keep essentially them, keep them from knowing too much. Keep them from knowing too much. Primarily to sell stuff. Yeah, it's a the commercial. sales meeting. Yeah. And we end up becoming the products. We're the ones who uh, get worked on. They're, it, they've been very effective. Yeah. I mean, so what we were doing in guerrilla television was something very different that somehow aligned with what Studs Terkel did and was doing, which is really trying to find out how the process of how things... Um, worked underneath the surface as well as on the surface. So uh, our relationship with du with studs really came out of Tom and um, and dovetail. Tom is uh, in a sense the our generation's studs because he has this archive like studs has his archive. So. Cool. Well, I hope he invites us on his show. <laughs> Sooner or later. <laughs> I think you've been on the show. I think Rising Up Angry was on Image Union once. Yeah. I would like to see that. I don't know that. I think that it was. Great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's talking about Is Blast from the, the past. your shows? Um, AR2. Yeah, oh. American Revolution yeah. 2. But in the, the shows, you're going to see studs with Nelson Algren. There are lots of things that happened in our video group where studs would fall by and we would just videotape his chatting with quite remarkable Chicagoans mm -hmm. from f famous people like Algren to people like uh, Sedlowski, Ed Sedlowski, labor people. So I think the, if you look at Media Burn, you see a collection of from, um, you know, People in studs is kind of intellectual league to people in the, the intellectual league who go undiscovered, like garbage collectors. Yeah. Who still have. Who have a lot to say this week. A lot to say. This, the uh, uh, screening tomorrow is from 2 o'clock in the afternoon until 8 o'clock at night. And, so, and he, uh, it's all 
all different. There's no where is it going to be? It's at the uh, cultural center at the Claudia Cassidy Theater, and you can walk in and walk out. Uh, it's free. Anytime you want, and it's free. Yeah. So the, the one thing I was thinking of when Judy was saying, um, uh, people just kind of wandered in. There's a, a relative. How long would you say, Sarah? About five minutes with Studs and Nelson Algren, where. It was the day that Algren was leaving to go to uh, Patterson, New Jersey, and, or the day after he, he was about to leave. And there's a piece with him and Studs kind of doing shtick, that's all I could say. <laughs> and Algren is, is just Dada, you know, he was unbelievable, he was wonderful. <laughs> and, and Studs was just laughing, and it, it, it's, it's just a lovely moment of how these guys, these, these, these salty icons. old dudes, they were icons, you know, they, what are they, you know, they're, they're people who we can idolize in certain ways and learn from in lots of ways, mm. how they behave when they were just being rather than performing. Well, that's a real treasure. Yeah. Yeah. That is a real treasure. Right, and that compilation we put together, The Best of Studs, where Tom and I and, and others um, pulled the best little clips from our archive. We have all these tapes, and some of them have just these moments that are just perfect. We pulled all those together, and that's um, edited together for a show at 515 at the Cultural Center. And afterwards, a bunch of Studs colleagues and friends are going to speak, like Lois Baum, Tony Judge, um, Tom, a few others. Um, so that is definitely the highlight of the day, if anyone is interested in a specific part of it. That's at 515. That and that's again that's tomorrow at the cultural center mm -hmm. um, in a part of a day that is goes from 2 p.m. till 8 or 9 p.m. 8 yeah and uh, the part to not miss if you're thinking of a part to go to is starts at 515 mm -hmm. that's terrific. But there's great programming all day let me ask the three of you in our remaining moments of this segment um, what people, uh, what you each should think is the most important thing about Studs Terkel and what he has done for humanity. Jeez. How's that? Just a little light. Judy, you go first. <laughs> You're the professor at the U of C. I think yeah, that's great. I think that was what, yeah, it, what I, was the most important thing. Okay, we got one. I think, I mean, Studs was a leftist. He was always um, um, rooting for people who um, deserve to have power. So I think that, you know, he's, he's beyond description in that he uh, was an archivist. He's, um, you know, he collected people, I guess. And um, I don't know that there are too many people doing that today who can really look into something and see how exquisite it could be. Uh, he was always looking for that and moving that forward rather than what we see going on today with them. Um, he wasn't a mean girl. <laughs> and you, Sarah, what, is, what do you got to say? Yes, yeah, similarly, Studs was able to make us remember history by illuminating the stories of ordinary people and really making the experience of living through, you know, the Depression in World War II, those things like that, making the experience real through the stories of individuals rather than a, just a historical narrative. Well said. Well, we want to thank you all for coming on the thank live. Thank you from for the your Hotline good show. work. It's always Thanks good to see it. Judith up here, and it's good to meet Sarah and Tom. Good to see you again, and we'll look forward to. Hopefully, we'll get down there tomorrow. Do it. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Right. You have to come back again because I know you do a lot of different things. I sure. can yeah. see that in your eyes. <laughs> um, Eli. Downtown. Eli is the wonderful person who gets up early, goes downtown, and runs that board. He's looking for a little help and support. We're, so get a hold of us. Michael at Heartland Cafe. Michael at HeartlandCafe.com would be the way. And you could uh, tell us if you too want to be an engineer at WLUW, particularly for the Live from the Heartland show brought to you every Saturday morning, 9 to 10, on WLUW.org. Yeah, come on, run the board. Or on WLUW 88.7 FM. And uh, how about uh, giving us a short musical break, maybe some rock and roll, maybe uh, if you got Smith Westerns, if you got uh, Twin Peaks, if you got the Butthole Surfers, uh, play us a little tune, because we got a couple of road dogs going to be coming up here, and they're going to share a couple of stories. We'll be right back with more Live from the Heartland, here on the left end of your dial.